Previously on Landon Bailey. Your arms in the air. I'll explain it. I'll explain it. Relax. Got a two, one, two. Sometimes musical inspiration can come from anywhere. What a great statement. You can quote me on that. It's just like deep. So deep. So I'm a big fan of the Canadian band Limb Lifter. They recently released a new album. If you haven't heard of them or heard them, I'll share links in the description. Pop them up in the cards. So they released a video called Haystack Rock on their YouTube channel. And I saw this, this guitar. And uh, something about the blue, I have a thing for blue guitars, and the Rosewood fretboard, it just did it. And I I had been recently watching a a listing on Reverb for a Fender made in Japan 60 Stratocaster, which pretty much mimicked that look. So those two things, they got my uh, gas going. And then I saw the guitar again in the second single, a video called Subtitles, and I messaged Limb Lifter in the comments on that video, and Ryan Dahl replied. That, that was really cool. I asked what kind of strat it was. Well, I'm not going to lie. You can just read the comment here. This is what I said. This is what he said. That's what he said. And uh, let's just say at that point, my gas was pretty bad. And I had eaten at McDonald's earlier that day. So back to the guitar, I mentioned uh, I was watching a Made in Japan 60s traditional strat on reverb from a seller in Japan. <clears throat> that wasn't part of the story. So I sold some gear to pay for it. I ordered it up. And... Uh, and then this happened. Look at that. Did that trigger anybody? Luckily, everything worked out and uh, the guitar was not damaged at all. I'll put a link to the initial unboxing and reaction video so you can check that out. When I got the box, I'm like, I gotta record this. This is some YouTube content, even though I'm not content with the content. So I've spent some time with it, a few weeks, and I'm finally making this video. So what exactly is it? It's a Made in Japan exclusive model called the 60s Traditional Series, and this one's in Lake Placid. They only sell these in Japan. They're made for the Japanese market. And I got it from a Japanese shop on Reverb. I'll include a link to my Reverb shop and an affiliate link in the description, and it'll pop up in the cards or somewhere. You, you can find it. And uh, I just recently started using Reverb more often for buying and selling. So, and, 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 and you might be surprised. I would not hesitate to order from this Japanese shop again. You're probably like, you're crazy. Look at the package. What did they do to it? That was completely the fault of FedEx. And they took responsibility for it. And they were ready to make a claim if anything was damaged. And the saving grace was the way that the seller packaged it all. It was sealed in a plastic bag. And, 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 and it was... Box. I think it was double box. Anyways, it had enough packaging that the moisture didn't get through. Moist. So let's check it out from top to bottom. We'll look under the hood, then I'll play it. And I'll give you my pros and cons at the end. What we've got here is, well, actually, if you, you can follow along, go to Fender.com, click on the bottom of the page. This is how you get to the Japanese site. And you click on there and you go to Japan. Then translate the page to whatever, uh, you know, with whatever browser tool you want, unless you can read Japanese. Click on guitars and you go made in Japan traditional. And then click on the guitar I got. First thing you'll see is the basswood body. And I know this turns people away, a lot of people. Why? It's fine. I know it's it's softer, but you know, anyways, that's your issue. Let's go over it all. See, it's got the different colors, five different color options. Basswood body, gloss polyester finish. Got a maple neck, gloss poly neck. U-shape, that's the most uh, unique thing I think about it. Pun intended, unique. Fingerboard radius 9.5. I don't think these specs actually match a 60s model, but uh, it feels nice in the hands anyways. Uh, thinner nut width, a little bit thinner. I don't really notice it. I just realized that now. Bone nut, 21 frets. Vintage style single coil strat pickups on all three positions. You got a five-way switch. The tone knob, the second one does not change the tone on the bridge. That's something to note. So that's like old school wiring, vintage wiring. Six saddle vintage style synchronized trim, nickel chrome, three ply mint pickguard, eggshell, control knobs, pretty standard stuff here, but uh, really nice. And a little dinky gig bag. So there you go. Do the internet's up. Hey, I didn't know that was on. Is the camera always on? So there you go. It's probably most comparable or comparable to a Ventera model in terms of specs, except you get a bone nut 
and rosewood fretboard, and you pay a lot less. So all said and done, delivering taxes, I'm in Canada, 12 15 96 Canadian, which is roughly 900 US. So I'll let you compare that to uh, other models and stuff. How does that compare? Let me know what you think. Let's check out some more up close detailed specs and then we'll hear it. Are we ready in the booth? We're good. Oh, we're on. Okay. Here's the measurement of the weight. Seven pounds, eight ounces, 3.4 kilo. Basswood is typically pretty light. So this is a good example of that. And then measuring all the pickup resistance and you can see the numbers, they mean stuff. You got a six and a three, and you got another six. They're pretty much all the same. 6.2-ish, around there. Another three, that's an in-between. You got six point, come on, 6.28. I think they were all like 6.2 something. You know, take the strings off and then we'll measure the neck. And this is something people asked for a long time ago. I never even knew the necks had measurements. I didn't know you could do that. Did you know you can measure a neck? I didn't know. I'm just kidding. Of course you can. We've got the caliper here. The caliper, uh, body thickness, full body thickness, you know. It's a real guitar. Now I'm going to use some phone oil or F1 oil, whichever way you want to say it. Words don't matter. This is like, it's all interpretation. And, uh, oh shoot. Is that okay? <laughs> That's fine. It's just fake. It's not real. Check out this tool. <laughs> not me. This this tool here to get the knobs off. Best invention since uh, sliced bread. I don't know what it's called. I'm just gonna call it the thingy. Thingy to pull your knobs. Nice thing here. The uh, uh, the uh, oh, look at that plastic ripping off. Um, what I was gonna say was cool thing with the made in Japan guitars. They include a little warranty card that has. The serial number, it's like, uh, basically like a certificate. So I like to peel that thing off and then put it in there, do that stuff, stick it on there. I'll always remember it was that made in Japan traditional. I'll never forget. Pull the plastic off, put the knobs back on. Let's take a look inside the guitar under the hood. Take all the screws off. And uh, I like when they come off easy like this. Super easy. Just careful, careful. I want to pull the, you know what, I've pulled the ground wire off before, I'll be honest. I've done it. Sometimes the ground wire that goes through, it's tight, and uh, I've pulled the one off. And then you go plug the guitar in, you don't realize you've pulled it off. And uh, yeah, it's a noisy mess. You got to go fix it. So really nice interiors. Here you got full-size pots, really nice switch. Everything I expected. And there you go, close up, 250k pots. We're done. We're going to put it back together. We'll flip it over. Put the screws back on first. Because you don't want to leave it without the screws in. And we'll flip it over on its tummy. Take the neck plate. Uh, not the neck plate. The uh, back plate off. Do you guys leave your plate on your Strat or take it off? Did you know if you take it off that uh, it's just not on anymore? And apparently it does something. I think it's a weight relief trick. That's what I think. Because these are heavy. No, they're not. Just kidding. Let me know. Do you take it off? Leave it on. Lake Placid Blue. All guitar tones are going through this Princeton reverb amplifier being captured by a Sennheiser E906 microphone into my computer, and then it's way too technical to explain. It's like ones and zeros and stuff. Enjoy.
Oh, you made it this far. Hey, if you did make it this far, let me know in the comments. That's that's awesome. That means you should give the video a like, I think, at this point. You probably like the video, or you don't like it. Anyways, I have nothing but good things to say about the whole package. I mean the guitar as a package, not the not the box, and that that that's a whole other issue. The guitar is great. The build, the feel, the tones, the price, all the specs, everything. All great. One con that's like not even important, the dinky little gig bag. It's basically a dust cover. Uh, I mentioned that before because I've had a couple. It's nice to have. Uh, it doesn't really offer any protection other than the shipping. That's not even a knock on the guitar, right? It's just an accessory. So, made in Japan, 60s traditional Stratocaster in Lake Placid Blue. Check out my reverb links in the description again if you're looking to get one. And you can check out my Made in Japan buying video. I'll link that below because I've bought now, is this three? One, two, three. This will be the third one. I'll turn this over to you. Made in Japan Fender Guitars. Is it all hype? Is it is it legit? Let me know your thoughts and experiences, good and bad. I think they're awesome. I think they're great value if you can find a, a seller at a good price. As always, play guitar and have fun, and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, I had one more thing. Um, oh, the most important thing about if you're going to buy one of these, the Made in Japan guitar... <laughs>